Uh, let's get back to oil and uh, talk about New York State. Uh, they said no, no fracking in New York State. Well, National Review columnist Jillian Melchior is here. Uh, Jillian, what, why? Come on, the whole country's going that way, but New York says no. What's yeah. wrong? Well, I think this is clearly a political decision rather than a scientific one, and it's the governor's kind of shirking responsibility. They're pushing this controversial decision on their agencies and then saying that a report supports it. But if you look at the report, it's deeply, deeply flawed. Yeah, but but it's, it's, uh -huh. is it just a populist idea or is or is is, is governor cuomo uh, responding to some pressure group somewhere absolutely there's been a really powerful environmental lobby that hasn't wanted this so first draft of the report the environmental report actually was going to recommend fracking they ended up sending it back then you get they got the wrong answer <laughs> they got the wrong answer so sent it back said you know we want a report that's going to look at the public health impacts Conclusion, too risky. Well, you look at that report, and one of the public health risks is just basically associated with prosperity. It's talking about boom time economics. It's talking about the social costs of rural places that grow really fast. Well, that's nice, but would be hearing the same complaints if it were a wind farm taking off? I'm skeptical. Mark Lanier, what's, uh, there, uh, if, if they do this, somebody claims I'm ill, I'm ill because of fracking, they try and connect the dots. Well, they're tough cases to prove, but I will say this. That's why we have a tort system. The government doesn't need to do this. If industry does not frack responsibly and they pollute groundwater, then we make the industry pay for groundwater. That's why we have a court system. If someone gets ill and they can prove it to a scientific degree of proof, then they get recovery. But, but companies generally are responsible in their fracking because they don't want to be sued. We don't need the government doing this. And Jillian, Precisely. I mean, what's, what's the track record? Well, I think it's, it's been pretty decent, but this report that they're using to justify it makes a lot of mistakes, ignoring the fact that there's already a legal incentive and a lot of regulations surrounding this industry. And then on top of it, you know, some of the reports that they do cite are really deeply flawed. One of the ones that they rely on was actually so troubled that the Colorado chief medical officer said, don't pay attention to this report. It's, it's pretty much bogus. So I think you've got bad science here that's being used to justify this a political is, this decision. Is, this is where we are with all kinds of environmental controversies and battles. Is junk science good science? My <laughs> science is better than your science? The president says all scientists agree on, on global warming, and they don't. <laughs> but so, I mean, it, well, it's yeah. making the scientific community look pretty bad. It is. And I think if you want to look at the science here, the environmental science, you've got fracking producing a lot of natural gas. Even Mayor de Blasio has said that as New York City uses natural gas for energy rather than other sources, but since 2005, we've dropped emissions by 19%. That's Mayor de Blasio, far left Mayor de Blasio saying that. So I think there's an environmental well, cost. And Mark, you're from Texas. So, Absolutely. I mean, we've been, we've been punching holes in the ground trying to find oil for a long time. Yeah, and, and fracking is big in Texas, and I'll tell you, we believe that fracking is the reason oil is so cheap today. We broke OPEC's price control because we can frack and produce in this country. Oh, it's dramatically changed the power balance, balance when it comes to energy. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you look at Russia, we've overtaken them in natural gas. Saudi Arabia, we've overtaken them in oil. This is something that's huge, that's wonderful for the American economy, for consumers, for manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, take, I mean, we, we have we have put Vladimir Putin. We didn't know what to say to him mm -hmm. when he took over Crimea, but now all of a sudden he's kind of in the cor corner, whimpering a little bit, uh -huh. going, "Hey, my my oil price, help!" <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I'm we, a fan of that. <laughs> it, it reminds me of Ronald Reagan taking down the Soviet Empire mm -hmm. by uh, dropping those oil prices down. Julian Melcher from uh, National Review, thank you thank very you. very much. Meantime, up next.